Well, how are you doing? This is going to be called why air and gas has no mass or apparent downward weight. <clears throat> One, all gases are unbonded, so every atom, molecule and particle is independent of every other atom, molecule and particle. Two, gas, gas atoms, molecules and particles move about in all and every possible vector and direction at the calculated rate of between 500 and 700 meters per second. Excuse me. Three, unlike liquids and solids, gas does not have a singular downward vector. Its vectors are in all directions simultaneously. Four, all items, objects and substances are weighed in accordance with their relationship to the medium of air, as air and gas are the baseline for all calculated weight. All liquids and solids, solids will fall through the medium of air and gas, with the exception of tiny dust particles and tinfoil boats placed into fish tanks filled with sulfur hexafluoride. 5. For something to be weighed on a weighing scales, it will be weighed in accordance with the medium of air, and due to the densities of liquids and solids, that will register on the scales as a downward force and acceleration. This 6. This apparent downward force is only caused by the density differential between liquids, solids and air, as the medium of air only allows for a downward acceleration of objects and substances that are greater in density than it. 7. Air will not take a downward acceleration in the medium of air, as that is impossible due to gas being the baseline for all the calculated weights of objects and substances denser, denser than it in the form of liquids and solids. 8. To weigh a gas, you must first contain a gas, because without containment, weighing is not possible. 9. For something to exhibit weight, it must first exhibit inertia, as inertia is defined as a resistance to acceleration. 10. Gas does not exhibit inertia, as gas does not resist acceleration, but rather it embraces acceleration due to its atoms, particles and molecules moving about constantly in every direction simultaneously at very high rates of velocity. 11. Mass is defined as a quantitative measure of inertia, inertia but mass is defined as weightless without being under the influence of a force of gravity. 12. Weight is defined as mass times gravitation or acceleration. 13. Inertia is defined as a resistance to this and all acceleration. 14. Mass is defined as inertia, but inertia requires weight to exist, as without weight there is no inertia, and if there is no inertia, then there is no resistance to acceleration. 15. Resistance to a force requires inertia. Inertia requires weight. Mass requires a force of gravity to have weight, so mass can only be inertia in the presence of a gravitational force. 16. Gravity is no longer considered a force by mainstream science since 1915. It is now an apparent effect of acceleration. 17. For something to have weight, it must exhibit inertia, as inertia is a resistance to acceleration, and acceleration is a change in the rate of velocity over time. So inertia resists, <coughs> sorry, resists uh, <coughs> a change in the rate of velocity over time. Sorry, I'm literally a bit dry. 18. <clears throat> Gas does not exib exhibit inertia, nor does it exhibit any form of resistance to changes in the rate of velocity over time. So gas and air officially do does not have inertia, so it can't have weight. 19. Neither gas nor air can be considered to be a mass, as mass is incorrectly defined as inertia, and inertia is defined as a resisting acceleration, something gas does, does not ever do. 20. Neither gas nor air can be considered to have weight, as to have weight you must first exhibit inertia, something that gas does definitely not exhibit. 21. The proof of this is that gas must be contained to be weighed. It must be contained as it will not exhibit a downward force on the scales otherwise. 22. Gas has no accumulated anything. Every gas particle is independent of all others. Thank you.